And I opened my email at my office one day and it said, Dad, come get me. And I responded and I don't know if he ever got it, but I said, um, you know, I can't come get you right now. You know, I don't even, I don't know how all this is going to work, you know, legally. Mm-hmm. So then. Was she fighting for full custody at the time? I think she was trying to. I don't know if any, I, I guess nothing was ever really entered in a court yet. Okay. Okay. But I was led to believe this is what is going on and I couldn't get a hold of her. Well, the next day I opened my email, there's another message. And my son says, if you're not coming to get me, I'm walking back. Wow. From Southern California. And I got a message out. I said, don't walk. I'm working on it. I had found someone that I was dealing with up here whose friend, he was an attorney, and his friend was a detective in that area of Southern California. So we were working on that. But my son was getting impatient, and he wanted to get away. Well, school was beginning. I never transferred records for him. And my wife had called the police one morning when school was starting out there because my son would not come out of his room. He says, I'm not going to school here. This is not my school. Well, you locked me in there. I mean. Yeah. (laughs) She called the police and they came over. They made her call me at my office. So she called me up and said, you have to tell these people that, Our son is living out here now, and he needs to go to school. And I said, let me talk with him. So the police made her put him on the phone. And I said, where do you want to go to school? He says, I don't live out here. I want to go back to my school. I want to come home. So the police then told her that she had to let him go. And I said, hold on. I'm going to call back in a half hour. So I got on the phone, I got him a plane ticket immediately, which is very expensive. (laughs) Yeah, that's short notice. (laughs) Yep. And I told the airline, if it's going to cost me that much money, I want him first class all the way. Mm -hmm. And they did agree to do that. So he rode first class back out. And I got him and school started out here the very next day. Now, here's where we get into some more political stuff. He was on a red-eye flight all night. I picked him up at a local airport, and he was whipped. He'd been through a lot. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go by the school this morning because school is starting today. So I went, took him by the school, and I said, look, this is what has been going on. He won't be in school today. I'm taking him home so he can rest. They said, well, that's not a viable excuse. Boo (laughs) who? I said, well, that's the truth. This is high school? This is high school. Well, you can't miss the first day of school. <laughs> I missed the first day of school and the third day of school when you when I was in you fifth can, grade because I had strep or something, and I tried to go the second day. But I mean, it's not like they kicked me out of school for not being there the first day. But you had a viable excuse according to what they want, right? Oh, yeah. So I said, "Well, do you need me to write an excuse?" And they said, "Yes." I got a pen and a piece of paper, and I wrote down, my son will not be in school today because he's been on an overnight flight from California all night, and he's in no condition for school today. So I handed it to him, and they said, that's not a viable excuse. It's not a legal excuse for him to be out of school. Well, what if he couldn't you just say he was sick? Well, this is what they're trying to get me to say, but I was trying to Tell the truth. To tell the truth. Right. I want it to be on a truthful basis. Right. But he's sick in the, reg- I mean, yeah, you're, yeah. you're stretching it. It gets gray, but I mean, you're, you're not able to go. You're exhausted. Exhaustion isn't? Sleep deprivation isn't? Apparently not. Hmm. It doesn't fall into their standards of excuses. Got to fit in the box, you know? But I did not write another excuse. I left it at that. And what, we left. What are they going to do? You take him home. You're his legal guardian. That's right. They're not going to do anything, except they may not get credit for that kid now through the state funding. Right. Uh, this is what it boils down to, money. Gotcha. 
Totally. Look at that. <laughs> Imagine that money. Stupid money. Anyway, please Go continue, ahead. Roland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me yes and um and my son stayed with me you know he never he never left until he was 18 so at this time i was working for the government i worked for a uh, highway department after i came out of the county jail so I, I went more off on the family thing uh not my occupation but i started working for a a, a local highway department because of the credentials I had earned in the military, I was able to use them to get a job because they, I had been trained and I had the right certificates and licenses for this particular type of work. So started working for the government at that point. I had not worked for the government before then. Even on a level, as a highway employee, it's still a government job. So this was my first experience with that, other than being in the military. And as I went through, like I usually do, I start climbing, and I got as high as I could go. And I was up for the top position. Well, that got kind of squashed because it was an elected position at the time, and I didn't want to campaign. Right. So another opportunity opened up with an office job. Turns out that I was the only one that had the computer knowledge at the time to take the office in the direction it was headed, according to the state, which controlled the office. It was an administrative job for a small township. So I took the position and began a little different political type of job. Little did I know how how much was involved at the time. <clears throat> so now I'm being trained and exposed to many different aspects of our government and the way that it works. And I'm researching and I'm calling and I'm finding out things. When I do a job, I like to do a, a good job. I like to know everything about what I'm doing. So... I started digging into some records that I had access to now and finding out that other officials in this agency weren't necessarily following standard procedure and were in fact costing taxpayers a lot of unnecessary money. My position required a yearly budget. I was in charge of the yearly budget for this small town. Now, if I'm going to do a budget, since I'm one of the taxpayers as well, I want the budget to be as skinny as possible without losing any services or, you know, without putting anyone in harm's way. And so I started researching things and asking a lot of questions, and this kind of stirred certain people up. Well, one thing that I discovered not too far into my term was that the county controls a lot of things that the towns do. A county is a bigger entity than a town, which is a bigger entity than a village. Okay, So the county has control of certain funds. Let's say, for instance, if you own a dog, you have to register that dog with your town through a dog license. Now, ultimately it's registered with the state, but the process is done through the town, who turns the monies over to the county, who in turn turns a certain percentage of the money back to the town. This wasn't being done. The money was going to the county and never coming back. That's one of the things that I discovered and took care of it made some county officials a little upset, to say the least. Okay, another way that revenues come into a town is through property taxes. There was a big corporate entity in this small town that's a worldwide company. 
not going to mention their name, they had been taken for a ride for over 10 years on property taxes. When I started looking into it, I discovered that they had been overcharged by over a million dollars a year wow. in the small town. Hmm. That's not right. Also, where is that extra million dollars going? Where indeed. So I called the headquarters of that corporation and finally got to their attorneys, the ones that take care of their taxes and so forth, and we started comparing notes. Within a, a matter of minutes, I was able to save them over a million dollars a year. Well, I called the county officials about it, and they immediately became my enemies. <laughs> yes, I should say so. <laughs> you, you weren't uh, bucking for a popularity contest at this point Not in time. Not at all. <laughs> and also through technicalities that are written within the the tax law that govern municipalities, I discovered a few little tricks that are totally legal but are able to save taxpayers quite a bit of money. And I implemented those just through certain procedure that no one had ever done or knew about and was able to keep our budget increase at zero or below every year. Well, one of the board members of this town, if you're into politics, he was a Democrat, told me that the budget had to increase between 2 and 5% every year regardless. That didn't make <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> so we didn't see eye to eye, and he tried several times to take me to lunch, and I just was never available because I would bring my own lunch and he was always welcome to sit down at my desk with me and, you know, we could talk over a peanut butter sandwich or something, but <laughs> he was never willing to do that. He wanted to get me out of that environment into his. <laughs> right. But as you had said earlier, growing up in that um, abusive family, you would have had an understanding of he wants you on his turf so he can push you around. Absolutely. Okay, so... These were a few things that were happening, and also there was another huge corporate ent entity in this town. This little town's booming. Little town should be booming. I mean, probably if things were done correctly, we wouldn't have property tax. Right. <laughs> so another part of uh, revenue is, comes in from sales tax. Business owners know what this is all about. They have to file their sales tax on a quarterly basis with the state. When you're talking a population of less than 3,000 people, it doesn't take a whole lot of tax revenue to, to, to support that population. Now, we're talking some pretty big industries that are bringing in a lot of sales tax revenue. And I started looking into this, and I started looking at the sales tax reports that were being filed from years ago and comparing them to when this corporate entity was bankrupt to the time when they were booming, which was the present at that time, and there was very little change. Hmm. That's now, very inconsistent with uh, what your right. buddy that wanted to take you out to lunch would exactly. have recommended. How could this be? Now this corporation is bringing in millions through sales, However, it's not reflected in the sales tax revenue report. So this got my attention, and I started asking questions. I started following my chain of command. A military guy who thinks for himself. Yeah. Dangerous. Danger, Very. danger. I was told to let sleeping dogs lie in this instance, but that's hard for me to do sometimes when it's involving my friends and neighbors and people I know that don't have a lot that are supporting somebody else that has a lot. <laughs> right. So mm -hmm. I had to keep digging. Well, it just so happens that this particular corporate entity had a big expansion project going on worth multi-millions. 